Hello, so in this video, I wanna talk more about the dot product of a matrix and a vector. And, uh, and I wanna do three things. First, I wanna just review um, if I have some sort of um, dot product example like this, uh, this right here, how do I actually write the code with NumPy to make it happen? And then I wanna spend some time trying to conceptually understand what is going on with the dot product. And, uh, and I may introduce two different mental models or pictures you might have. Um, you could visualize it row by row, or you could visualize it column by column. And, uh, and what I may be doing is I may be writing some Python code from scratch to really show you exactly what's happening in both those cases. All right, so first with this right here, um, let me try to capture these. And, uh, and I might do, be doing different uh, dot products for different reasons, uh, but in a lot of the cases in this course, we kind of have a specific use case, and that is, well, this matrix came out of some data frame and so that's some sort of x data. And then I have some coefficients that I want to multiply on every value in every cell. And I'm going to do that to get some y value. So, so I'm going to try to use those variables. I'm going to have well, x be my matrix. And, um, and the way I can do it is I can really think of it as like a list of lists, right? Like this. So I can say like 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And then I want to bundle it up nicely in a NumPy array. So I probably ought to import NumPy and say NumPy.array. And let me peek at that. And uh, this is just a convention, right? When it's um, two-dimensional like this, I'll typically capitalize. Um, for my other uh, vector, um, it's basically one-dimensional, so I'll make that lowercase. So there I have my x. Let me grab my c. So c equals... Um, uh, numpy.array, and here I have the values two and three, and if I peek at that, oh, don't, don't want that. If I peek at it, I, I see that it's not really vertical, and, and up here, the direction of my vectors is very important, so I wanna make sure this is vertical. And so the way I'll do, do that is I'll do a reshape, and for here I have rows and columns, and I want just one column, right? A, a, a single column is a vertical vector, and then negative one to basically say, well, give me as many as you need. And, and so there I have it, I have these two, and, uh, and probably the way I'll recommend that you uh, do the dot product is like this. I'll say uh, x, and then the at symbol means dot and c, and, uh, and I get this result right here. Just, just in terms of um, other code you might see, there's a few other patterns. I might say this. This is kind of uh, uh, what I see a lot of as well. It means exactly the same thing. Um, and then there's also the method version. So I could say x dot product c. You're going to see that in a lot of documentation as well. So just know that um, kind of all these three things are the same. Okay, so down here, uh, we're going to talk about two perspectives on what's actually going on. And um, one perspective is that I can just draw row by row. What I'd like to do is I'd like to take this first row, and I have those values there, and I'm going to multiply 4 and 5 by 2 and 3 respectively, right? So I get, I get here 4 times 2 plus 5, 5 times 3, and that would add up to 23, and, and then I'm done with the first row. So you can kind of see this first row varies all the way through, right? Um, and then I'm going to go to my second row here, and I'm going to say I'm going to multiply 6 and 7 by 2 and 3 respectively, and then I'm going to add up those products, right? So I get 6 times 2 plus 7 times 3, which adds up to 33. You can kind of see it's carrying all the way through again. So, so really, kind of for every uh, row I have in my input, I may get um, another value in, in my output. And the way you should be thinking about it is like, well, these are kind of um, my x values. Maybe I pulled them out of a data frame. And, uh, and then I'm doing this calculation. I want to put a coefficient. Uh, I want to put a coefficient on all of my x values uh, and do the multiplications to end up with these y values. So let me write a Python function to do exactly that. And, uh, and, and my big goal here, right, is I'm going to make it just a note up here. Um, I want to show how... Um, uh, numpy dot, and I have you know a matrix and a vector. Um, I want to show how that's going to be the same as these two functions I'm going to write. So I'm going to say, um, you know, row dot product of m and v and column 
dot product of m and v are all the same, right? So I'm gonna be writing the code for these two uh, to show you diff two different ways to kind of conceptualize what operation this is performing, right? So all of these are just redundant, right? It's different ways to think about what's happening and, uh, and they're gonna help you reason through different scenarios. Okay, so the first one, right, is just this, where I'm kind of thinking one row at a time, right? For each input row, I get an output row. And so for this um, row dot product, taking my M and my V, and, and really what I should do is I should loop over one row uh, at a time. So, so how can I do that? Well, um, I, I could say, well, you know, let me get my row index for row index in range of length of, of what? Um, well, the length of M is going to tell me how many rows there are, right? So, so the length would be three, not two, but, but three, right? That's what length does for matrix. It gives, it gives the number of rows. I'm going to loop over all of those rows and then maybe I'm just going to pull out the row. So the row will be, uh, what? It'll be M and then I want to pull out, uh, basically that row index and, uh, and I think just like that would be fine. Let me just try to print each row here. So I'm gonna call my row dot product and I'm gonna do it on my X uh, matrix and my C from before. And, uh, and I can see I'm getting each row. So I have four, five, six, seven, um, eight, nine, which is all good. Okay. Um, I think the other thing I wanna do is um, is for V, I, I want to uh, reshape that actually. I think it'll be a little bit simpler if it's one dimensional. So I'm going to say V equals V dot reshape. Um, let, let's just make it one dimensional, how, however long it needs to be. And then if I go here, I can I can just print off V as well. And, and you can kind of see how I'm going to line this up, right? I'm going to multiply four times two, and then I'm going to multiply five times three, and then I'm going to add up eight plus 15, and eight plus 15 is gonna give me my 23, right? So I kinda of need to loop, loop over these together. I need to loop over the four and two together, and then the five and three together. And, and so maybe the easiest way to do that is just say something like for i in range length of row, right? And then I can try to print off these pairs of numbers that I have to add off. Well, what is the row of i? And then for that vector, what do I have there? Right, so I'm gonna multiply four times two, and five times three. Maybe I'm just gonna do the multiplication right here, right? So I'm going to have, you know, 8 is from 4 plus 2, 15 is from 5, 5 plus 3. And, uh, and that's going to be a y value, right? So, so maybe what I should do here is I should say, uh, you know, y equals 0. And for each of those pieces, right, for each of those um, things that I'm kind of pairing uh, off and multiplying, I want to add that to my total. And, and maybe for now I can just print what that is. Right, so, so when I'm um, kind of multiplying this first row with my coefficients, I get 23. When I multiply my second row with those same coefficients, I get 33. When I multiply my third row by the, those same coefficients, then I get 43. And, and so to kind of wrap this all up nicely, um, what I need to do is I need to collect all of these y values together, the 23, 33, and 43, and, uh, and put them in a result. So maybe I'll say like my result is here, and instead of printing it, I'm just going to say result.append. And, uh, and then when I'm all done, I can just return um, my result as a numpy array dot numpy. And, um, and I'm just going to uh, kind of force that to be a, one of these vertical vectors again, right? Where I'll say um, however many rows in one column. I'm going to do all that. And, and let me just try to clean this up before I run it. Uh, I'm going to do that. And... Uh, why did I do that? NumPy dot NumPy, NumPy dot array. And, and, and very good, right? I get 23, 33, 43, uh, just like I did up here, right? So kind of a simple test case, right? At, at least row dot for this particular example is giving me the same thing as the NumPy version. We can kind of see row by row what's happening. Okay, now there's another way I could define the dot product that feels very, very different, but it, it turns out it actually always gives you the same results. Um, if I had this kind of situation where I had a matrix with just one row, and, uh, and let's say those um, values in that row were C0, C1, and C2, 
and then I multiplied it by uh, this vertical vector that has x, y, and z, um, you know how to do that, right? You'd say c0 times x plus c1 times y plus c2 times z. And, um, and what's cool is that uh, is that if I have um, these things, if these are not single values, but they're actually full columns, this formula here actually works out the very same same way. And, and so what that means is that when I multiply this uh, uh, this vector, or I'm sorry, this matrix by the vector 2, 3, well, what I'm really saying is that I want to take 2 times this column. You can actually see that here, 2 times that column plus 3 times the second column. You can see that right here, 3 times the second column. And, and then basically multiply each column by itself and then add it all off. And this is an example of what we call a linear combination. Um, a linear combination is where we have a bunch of um, uh, kind of uh, values, right? And these values could either be, um, you know, vectors, matrices, scalars, scalars, whatever. Um, and, and I want to take a linear combination of them now. And what that means is I'll multiply them each by some number. And after I uh, multiply them each by their multiplier, I just add them all up, right? So it's just kind of this simple multiplier step before I just add them. So linear combinations are kind of very simple, even though it's kind of a fancy word. So, so let me see if I can write the, uh, the code for this. And, and the, the, the function is going to be very similar in this regard. I'm going to start up here and I'm going to say column dot this time. And, uh, and, and right away again, I want to loop over something in the matrix. I, I guess before I was looping over the rows. And, uh, and, I, and I don't quite want to do that this time. This time I want to loop over the columns, right? So I'm going to change this. I'm going to say column index this time. And then uh, I can't do length because length can be, gives me the number of rows and I want the number um, of columns. So, so what I could do, well, if I say m dot shape of zero, this is the same as length, right? So zero dimension gives me the number of rows. This gives me the number of columns. And so I think if I print my column index here, let me just double check what I'm telling you. Uh, I see zero and one, right? The zeroth column, the oneth column. And, and then if I want to, I can actually pull out those columns, right? So I could say something like, you know, column um, equals, what is it? Um, I, I guess it would be M. And then uh, what do I need? I need like a row slice and then a column slice and uh or, or column index right i can do either indexing or slicing along either of these dimensions and so for the column index well i just want to pull out that one and then for the rows i would really like all of them so so i have that column and maybe i can just print this thing off and uh and, and you can see that it, it got a little bit wacky right when i did that because because why well um you know, when I have an index here, that kind of reduces the dimension, right? So, so just kind of pulling out this column and turning it into this one-dimensional thing. Maybe what I could do is I could just reshape it and I could say, you know, make it vertical again, right? So I can pull out, you know, here's a column and I can pull out, um, here's a column. Okay, so now I want to get these multipliers again, right? So maybe um, what I'd like to do is uh, is... I have two columns, and uh, and that also means I'm going to have two values in my V. And um, and like last time, actually, I would like to just kind of flatten it, right? I don't really care about the direction of it anymore. Let's just make it a one-dimensional thing uh, instead of this vertical thing. Uh, if I do that, let me let me kind of see here. What what I can do is I can I can uh, let me print off this. I can say V and then also look at that same column index, right? So, so I can see basically I want to multiply this column by two and, and this column by, by three. And, um, and so instead of four, six, eight, I guess I should do what? I should do like eight, 12, 16. Let, let me just do it right now. I'm going to do multiply this column here by, by two, right? So let's see if it's eight, 12, 16. It is 8, 12, 16. And then the other column, right? I guess um, this column here up above 5, 7, 9 becomes multiplied by 3. So that becomes 15, uh, 21, 27. 
And, uh, and so this is all great. And, um, and I'd like to add it to some sort of total. Right, so, so maybe up here I may have some sort of result equals something. And then down here I'm gonna say, well, result plus equals whatever this is. Okay, and then when I'm all done, I'm gonna return that. And, and so what I'd better do is I better make sure that, that this thing um, is the right shape, right? If I wanna be adding, adding these columns to it, it better start as um, kind of like this vertical column uh, of Ys. And, and so this is actually one of these great cases where I can say numpy.zeros. And, um, and, and when I do this, I can put in a, a, a shape tuple, right? What, what shape do I want my zeros? And, and so let me think about that. Uh, you know, I have the rows and the columns and I know my result should just have one column, right? I mean, it needs to be the same shape of these things that I'm adding up. And how many rows do I want? Well, I guess however tall my result should be, it should be the same height as my M. So I can say length of M. Maybe let me just print that before I go too much farther. I just print that result at the beginning. I can I see, have these three zeros in the right places. Maybe I can actually print it down here as well. And you can kind of see how I'm, I'm adding up these values as I go, right? Um, first, I just put the the first column times two there. And then on top of that, I add three times the second column, right? I get three times the second column. And so you can see I can just accumulate like that. And, uh, and then when I'm all done, I guess I actually wanted to return that thing. So I do that and, uh, and I see it straight, right? I'm not trying to prove that these two um, functions are always going to return the same result. The code feels very different, uh, but I'll let you just kind of take it on faith for the purpose of this course that these two ways of looking at it and these two ways of writing the code uh, produce exactly the same same result. And it, and it turns out that in many cases, this column picture is kind of the better mental, mental, mental picture to have uh, when we're kind of reasoning about uh, machine learning models.